Hi everyone, welcome back. This is part two of our tutorial on robots. And today we're primarily going to be covering logistics bots. Now, logistics bots uh, basically only move items from one chest to another. Um, and you can also consider your personal inventory as a sort of a chest. Um, now, what I've done here in the base to prepare for this is I have distributed some roboports throughout the base. Um, they are all part of the same logistics network, as you can see with the uh, yellow dashed lines. As long as the orange region around each roboport is touching the orange region of another one, they will be linked and it'll be one continuous logistics network where uh, a bot inside that network will be able to access all of the materials that are contained there. All right, so before we can make use of our logistics bots, uh, we have 200 of them in the network right now, uh, we need to put some items in the logistics network. So what I'll do to begin with, um, I've got three uh, steel chests here that I've just been using to dump various things. Um, so what I'm going to do, uh, just to begin, I'm going to replace those with storage chests. All right, so now if we hover over one of the chests, we can see uh, on the top there, you can see the contents of this particular chest, which is the fish, a pistol, and exoskeleton. And then below, you can see the complete contents of the entire logistics network. If you wanted to get a closer look at that, you can press the L key, uh, and here you'll see the contents of the network. Uh, and it's also searchable. Uh, which is really handy. So if you're looking for a particular item, uh, you can find it. Uh, you can look at the different networks up here. Um, unfortunately, you can't rename the networks, um, which sometimes makes it hard to identify which is which. Um, but network three, this is uh, the one here in the main base. Uh, network one is me, uh, because I have personal roboports, I count as a network. And then network two, doesn't have any items in it. That's just a, uh, a solar array that I have over here that has some roboports in it. Okay, so now that we've got some storage um, and we have some items in the network, I'm gonna start by explaining uh, how to use logistics for your personal inventory. Um, now I've done some research, uh, let me find it here. All right, so we have uh, character logistics slots. Um, these are the, the ones here on the top. These allow me to request items to be delivered to me from the network. Um, and then the other ones are logistic trash slots um, and auto trash slots. So I'll show you those in a, in a minute. But first let's start with the uh, what we could call the requester slots. Um, and basically all you do is you put in the item that you want to get from the network here. So let's say, uh, let's say I want some boilers. Um, I would select the boilers. By default, it's gonna set a stack size. Well, by default, it's gonna set the quantity equal to the stack size of the item, okay? Now nothing is happening yet because we're waiting for the bots to travel across the map. They go to the chest and then they bring it to me. And then it goes back home. Um, now you'll notice in this case, I got three boilers when I asked for 50, um, but that's only because there were only three boilers there to begin with. Um, if I look at the contents here, I can see that there are no more boilers. So I'm gonna right click that to get rid of it. Now, if I want to put an item into the storage network or the storage array, whatever you want to call it. All I have to do is move it here to my trash slots and then the bots will come and pick it up and then they'll go place it in a storage chest. Now in this case, the bot chose this storage chest. Um, now why didn't it put it back here? Well, the bots will try as much as possible to have only a single type of item in any particular storage chest. So the reason it took it over here is because this one was empty. It didn't have any other types of items in it. Uh, and that's why I put it there. 
Now if I dump uh, another item, let's say this hazard concrete, uh, there are 48 of those, so uh, I think some more bots will get involved. Now in this case, it'll just choose any chest. Um, it just happened to choose the same one. Um, but uh, I think it would probably select whichever one had the fewest number of items in it, number of different items in it. Okay, so that's how you lose the, the trash slots and the logistics slots. Now, normally what I like to do on the logistics slots is populate these with items that I use on a frequent basis. So I'll put yellow inserters, um, blue inserters and red inserters, stack inserters, you know, and then I'll put uh, my different types of belts and stuff. Um, usually a lot of just what I have on my tool belt is what I'll put in here. So let me just populate this with a few items that I normally use. Uh, let's see, power poles. Uh, what else we have here? Yeah, pipes are a good one. Okay. Now, if you want to change the quantities, uh, you just go and select the item and you can use the slider or you can type in a number to uh, whatever quantity that you want. All right. Now, <clears throat> nothing is happening right now because none of those items are in the network. So um, what we have to do to make full use of this is to start putting items into the network. And we do that by the use of these chests. Now, um, to begin with, we're gonna be using two types of chests primarily, and that is the storage chest. Let me empty that out here. Um, the storage chest is a two-way device, meaning that bots can take items out of it or they can put items into it. And items that go into the storage chest are basically anything that a bot picks up and doesn't have an immediate use for. So if I'm not requesting the item, there's no other chest requesting that item. Um, that item is not needed for uh, something that's been ghosted. Um, then it'll go into a storage chest. And you really don't have any control over which item goes into which storage chest. The bots will decide for themselves. Uh, like I said, they'll they'll normally try to separate them so that each chest only has a single item type in it. But uh, once uh, once all the chests are used, then they'll start to put multiple items in the chest. Um, so that might sound bad, but to be honest, you don't really need to control what goes where because these chests are not for you; they're for the bots. So um, so you don't really care most you know in most cases what item goes into the chest. Um, you can limit the chests, uh, like you can with, uh, with wooden chests and steel chests and so forth. You can limit those if you want. Um, you can't filter them. Um, so that's the storage chest. It's the only chest that, uh, is two ways, can receive or give items. Um, now the other types of chests, uh, and the next one we're going to use now, is the passive provider. Now a passive provider is a one-way chest. Uh, you can put items into it either manually or with inserters, um, but bots can only take items from the chest and they will only take items from the chest when there is an active request for that item. Now that is in opposition to the active provider chest uh, the difference here is that an active provider chest, whatever you place into it will get taken out immediately. So the active provider chest actually works a lot like your trash slots. Whatever you put in here, um, it's in you're instantly going to tell the bots to remove those items. Um, and what they'll do is they'll move it into storage. Um, and I can show you a few applications for this later, but uh, but for now, uh, active provider chests are very are very handy if you just want to get rid of a few items, you know, so if I put, uh, you know, I put some of that stuff in there, the bots will come and take it out and they'll put it into the storage network, as you can see there. All right, they instantly empty it. Now, if I put items in a passive provider chest, nothing happens right away. Right, so the bots are perfectly happy for items to be inside the passive provider. Um, 
so the reason for the passive provider chess is to give items to the network, um, but but when you don't want other items to get placed in those chests, that's basically the difference between storage and the passive. Um, so let me put a few items back in there. Now the uh, the fourth type of chest is the requester chest, and this is also one way, but in this case, the bots are only allowed to place items into it. They're not allowed to take items out. And this is what you would use, uh, for example, to feed items to an assembly machine. So in this case, uh, you can put in requests. So if I put in a request for the hazard concrete, the bots will grab it out of storage. They'll put it in the requester chest uh, and they'll try to keep it filled to whatever quantity I specify. So if I change this to 10 now, and I put that back in there, then in that case, I get 12. Well, why do I get 12 instead of 10? Um, that's just because I have cargo size bonuses on my bots, um, cargo plus three. So the bots each carry four items. So three bots came to pick it up. Uh, they each picked up a stack of four and then I ended up with 12. And that's just because I didn't hit 10 until after the third bot arrived with his quantity of four. So the bots will sometimes overfill it just based on the quantity of items that the bots can pick up. Okay. Um, obviously you can request um, multiple items into the same chest uh, if you wanna do that. No problem there. And then to clear it, you can either shift right click on the chest. No, I'm sorry, you can't do that. All right, I guess you have to right click each one individually. I thought you could clear it manually, but. Um, and uh, it's important to note that when you clear the request, uh, the items stay inside. They don't take the items out, right? They would only take it out if this was an active provider. And by the way, if you want to empty a chest, you can just replace it with an active provider chest like that by clicking over it. All right, we want that to be storage. Okay, so that's the four types of chests. Now, um, in this space, uh, I've got a few storage chests here. I don't really like the location though. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, and, and I would do this uh, when I was setting up a new base. I'm gonna set up you know, an array, uh, let's say 16 chests. That's gonna be my storage area. Um, it's good to have that close to a RoboPort um, since there's gonna be a lot of bots flying by here. Uh, it's good to have a RoboPort close by so that they can stop and charge or, or put themselves away when they're done. All right, and then uh, rather than picking these up and moving items over there myself, I'm just gonna replace these with active providers and I'll let the bots do all the work. So now the bots will come, they'll start to empty those out. Um, and you can see here, they're uh, attempting to separate things into their own chests uh, so that there's uh, no duplicates. Uh, but again, they will from time to time uh, have to share chests if there's not enough chests to go around. All right, so you can see I had a lot of items in there, uh, a lot of wood in particular. And so with only 200 bots, uh, they're taking a little while to move it. Uh, you can also see that now a lot of bots are waiting to be recharged since a RoboPort can only charge a certain number of bots at a time. Um, does it say here? Four? I think it can charge four at a time. Right. So sometimes you'll see bots hanging around like that uh, because they're waiting to get a charge. Uh, and that's also why uh, it can sometimes be useful to have multiple RoboPorts in the same place. Uh, let me grab some red circuits here so I can make another RoboPort. Um, because in this case, you know, I, I have all the coverage I need here in terms of the area. Um, but it would probably be a good idea to put in another RoboPort there just so that there are more charging slots available and the robots don't have to wait around as long to get themselves charged. Okay, so now that these are emptied, I go ahead and pick those up and I've got a nice uh, little storage network here that can hold lots of items. Okay, now the next thing I wanna do is start getting the items that I need into the robot network. 
And to do that, uh, you can quite simply go around and start replacing these chests with passive providers. That will make all the items inside available to the robots. You can see that now the bots are going to work and bringing me the items that I requested. Okay, so we'll do the same up here for the inserters. Uh, stack inserters I never did because I don't have uh, red circuits yet. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and put these down. All right, I think I got all the items there. Okay, now uh, the good thing is that if you had a limit set on the chest before, uh, it will continue to have the same limit when you replace the chest. However, I once you have a storage uh, storage network set up, I don't recommend that you rely solely on the chest limit to control your inventory. The reason for that is, uh, and let me let me give you an example. Let's say um, let's say I go somewhere and I pick up a bunch of yellow belts. Okay. And I've got extra yellow belts. Um, let me, uh, I'm just to simulate this, I'm going to reduce the quantity. All right, so I'm going to put a couple hundred belts, get rid of these, right? I don't need them. And now those belts are in the storage, as you can see. All right, so now there's 500 and some belts. Um, looks like they came over to this chest. Let me... Let me get rid of this chest here. There we go. Just so we have everything where we can see it. Okay, so there's a bunch of yellow belts there. Um, now, since I'm allowing 400 to accumulate here, now I have not only the 400 that are in here, but I have another 100 that are in here. And so, in that case, it's kind of a waste for this thing to go ahead and make 400 belts uh, when I already have a bunch of belts in storage. So the way that we can control that is we click on the inserter and we connect it to the logistic network. Okay. And now I'm going to tell it to only run when the number of belts is less than 400. Okay, so we can keep the same quantity, but now you can see the red light's on. And the red light is on because it knows that there are more than 400 yellow belts in the network. So it's not going to add more uh, unless there are uh, unless there are more less than 400 belts in the network. All right, so let me reset that. Um, and then let's, let's do that here for the red belts. Uh, let's see, red belt, less than 400. Okay. All right, and here you can see that the green light is on because there are less than 400. So this is gonna keep going until it hits 400. Now I can remove the limit on the chest. I don't need that anymore. And once it gets to 400, it'll stop. All right, so I would recommend going to do that on all of these, right? So in this case, it's, uh, 100 red undergrounds, less than 100. Uh, it's a little bit tedious. It takes it takes some time to set up. So here you can see there's 100 in there and it's not running, even though there's plenty of space left in the chest. Here too, we, we hit our limit. I think this is 100 also. Less than, whoops, not less than train, less than 100. Okay, and then we can remove the limits. Um, okay, so um, I th I've covered pretty much everything that I want to um, in terms of in terms of these things. Um, now, what can you use uh, this for besides just supplying yourself with items? Well, um, one good example might be over here, right now. If I'm gonna start launching one rocket after another to get space science, um, I don't wanna have to come over here and load a satellite manually every time. So one thing we could do is we could set up a factory here to make a satellite. 
Um, where is it? Satellite. Here it is. All right, now here you have to use the tier three assembler because it has so many ingredients. All right, and then I can put a requester chest to request the items that it needs. And uh, I would put a stack inserter here just because it's gonna be a large quantity of items getting transferred in, in order to make the solar panel. One, two, three, four, 455 items need to go in there, All right? And then we can have an inserter here. And then we could either go in here and manually add all the items that we need into the requester chest, or we can copy paste. So if we shift right click on the assembler and then shift left click on the chest, now the chest automatically has all these things added to it. Um, and it puts in enough Looks like it puts in enough by default to make five items. Um, now in this particular case, uh, this is gonna be a problem because rocket fuel and low density structures have a stack size of 10 and there's no way we're gonna be able to fit all that stuff in here. So what I'm gonna do, I'll change rocket fuel to 50 and I'll change low density structures to 50. In fact, let's just change all of these. We'll make this 50, 50, and we'll make that, well, that can be a full stack, 200, I think. Okay. Now, uh, nothing more is happening here because these items are not in the network. So we would then have to go and start adding these into the logistics network. All right, so here we'll put down some passive providers. Uh, let's see, these take 10 seconds to build, so we'll use yellow inserters. And then we're gonna wanna put a limit on all of these inserters. Now, one satellite requires 100 panels. Uh, let's see, how much do I need for one of these arrays? One of these arrays is 416, all right? So I'm gonna limit this to 500. So what I'll do, connect this to the logistic network. I'll tell it to run only when there are less than 500 panels available. And we'll set that, and then I'm gonna copy and paste that to all these other inserters. All right, so that way none of these inserters will work unless there are less than 500 solar panels in the network. Now, something important to note is that when items get placed into the requester chest, they no longer appear in the network. Okay, because those, those items are not available for robots to pick up anymore once they get put in the requester chest. Now, the bots obviously have to know what's in the requester chest, so they know how much stuff to put in there, but um, but as far as the rest of the network is concerned, those items are no longer there. Okay, and then we can do the same thing over here. All right, we'll put in an inserter. Uh, I'll make this 500 as well. Let's see, accumulator less than 500. We'll set that, and now I'm gonna make use of my construction bots. And I'm gonna, what I'm doing is I'm just shift left clicking. Actually, you don't have to shift if there's nothing in the way. There, now that was easy. Uh, and when you copy them with a blueprint, it copies their network settings as well. All right, so now we're making panels and accumulators. Um, we would need to do the same thing then for uh, the structures. We'd have to set up something to make radars because we don't make those currently. Now blue circuits, um, usually what I do when I want to add something that's already being produced that's on a belt like this into the network is I'll just put one passive provider close to the belt. Um, in this case, I'll just put a fast inserter because they go in slow. And then again, I'll set a limit on it. I'll say, um, only add more items to my network if there are less than 
let's say 200 items. Okay, so as long as there are fewer than 200 blue circuits anywhere in the network, um, it'll put more in that chest. So that, that way I'll always have items available. And eventually I would want to do the same thing with green circuits, red circuits, steel, iron plates, copper plates, you know, all the, all the ingredients that you need to make stuff um, at this stage in the game when you're starting to set up your base for robots. Uh, you would want to make sure that all the items that you're going to need to use are getting put into the network automatically like this. Okay. Um, so that's about it as far as the explanation goes. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to load up another map so I can show you some uh, large-scale robotic stuff. Um, this is from the Rail World Marathon series, which was the series that I just finished uh, before doing this tutorial series. So I'm going to go pull that up and I can show you some of the robotics that we have set up there. I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. Feels good to be back here. Uh, this was a fairly large base that I put together recently. Um, so here you can see all types of chests at work here. Um, now in this network, we have close to 3,000 logistics bots. And what I'm doing here is I'm making all of the six types of science packs. Um, space science is made where I do the rockets, but all the other six science packs are being made here. Um, as you can see, we're using beacons and modules for everything. Uh, but this is a good, a good place to check out because I've actually got every type of logistics chest in use here. Um, here where the trains are unloading, I have active provider chests. Um, the reason for that is that I'm loading lots of different items here, or unloading lots of different items from the trains, and I don't want them to be stored in these chests. I just want to use these chests to unload the trains, and then I want the bots to take those items to storage. So I've got the active providers up here. As soon as they get items in, the bots go and empty them out and they put them into one of these uh, many, many storage chests that I have down here. Okay, and then each of these assembler machines, as you can see, has an, a um, requester chest. All right, got another one done. Um, each one of these has a requester chest and a uh, passive provider chest. So the, re you know, in this case we're making copper wire. So here I'm just requesting copper plates, and then it's outputting copper wire into the chest. All right, here's one where we're making assembly machine ones. So I'm requesting gears, circuits, and plates, and then we're outputting uh, assembly machine ones. Right, so here you can see all in one place where we've got uh, active providers, we've got storage chests, we've got passive providers, and we have requester chests. Uh, and, and many, many bots, as you can see. Um, some other good applications uh, would be for mining. Um, I'm using bots for mining on this map. So here I have the miners going into passive providers. And then I have requester chests all along here where the trains get loaded. Um, and, and so these chests are all requesting a full chest worth of, of items. You know, so as, as the stuff gets mined, the bots uh, gradually fill up these chests and then the trains will come by, empty them out uh, or nearly so, and then they'll fill up again. Um, here in the smelting areas, uh, we're using a combination of requesters and passive providers. Um, so what's happening here is the trains unload the ore into passive providers to make them available to the bots. The bots take them to requester chests next to the furnace, right? The furnaces use the ore. They put the plates into passive providers. And then I have requester chests here to request the plates to get loaded into another train. All right, so uh, so this is a this is an instance where it's all 
uh, requester chests and provider chests. I don't have any storage chests or active providers here. All right, so that's just uh, a few examples of uh, what you can do with logistics bots in addition to just the basic stuff you do in the main base. Um, I hope this has been informative and useful. If you have any questions or would like to see something else uh, explained or demonstrated, please let me know. I'd be happy to do that for you. You know, that's one of the advantages of uh, subscribing to somebody like me that has a pretty small channel. Uh, if I get one or two guys saying, hey, Tuplex, can you make a video about thus and so, then there's a very good chance that I'm going to do that. <laughs> All right. Try getting that with uh, Markiplier. It's not going to happen, man. So thanks again for watching. Hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.